Mark Andre Fleury tickling the ear of an opposing player to Andrew Shaw destroying everything in his path to Craig Adams grabbing someone's hair? These are the most childish moments in NHL history. And number one was so surprising that even people who don't watch NHL thought that they were watching an episode of high school teenagers. Yeah, cause this is hockey. Now, who better to start with than the Boston Bruins' Brad Marchand? Marchand is a great player who is almost a perfect combination of both talent and determination. As the 2023-24 regular season is near the end, Marchand has 399 goals, which is fifth in all-time history of the Boston Bruins. Only Hall of Famers like Johnny Busick, whose coach told him to go figure skate, Bill Esposito, Marchand's former line mate, Patrice Bergeron, and Rick Middleton have scored more goals as a Boston player. And Marchand is even the team's captain these days. But this guy seems to have some serious issues. His history of being bizarre beyond the ice is as well documented and believe it or not, includes using his tongue for something other than talking. Specifically for licking faces. And he's done it more than once. First, he goes uncomfortably close to the face with the Tampa Bay Lightning, Ryan Callahan. Marchand then takes things one step further by appearing to kiss the cheek and the neck of Toronto Maple Leafs, Leo Komarov. Next, Sidney Crosby is one of the greatest players in NHL history. But that does not stop Brian Boyle of the New York Rangers from this cheap shot on the Penguins star during a scrum. It may not seem like that big of a deal, but Boyle is a big deal. At six foot seven and almost 250 pounds, Boyle most certainly was a vet big deal. So just a small shot from him was enough to get more than Sid's attention. Next, Vegas Golden Knights goalie, Mark andre Fleury, who has almost always had a great sense of humor, admits to being bored when he tickled the ear of the Winnipeg Jets' Blake Wheeler from behind during a scrum. Next, the Washington Capitals' Garnett Hathaway is not satisfied with trying to take just one member of the Anaheim Ducks, so he then grabs another and starts chirping both of them at the same time. There's something to be said for multitasking. Meanwhile, the Calgary Flames' Matthew Kachuk is multi-sticking after not so slyly pilfering the stick of San Jose Sharks' Brent Burns and taking it to the bench with him. That's two minutes for interference. Should have been ground for theft of a hockey stick. Come on. Matthew Barnaby of the New York Rangers is another example of being able to do two things at once. During his career, Barnaby was one of the most annoying players in the National Hockey League. Here, he shows just why. Not only is Barnaby fighting the Washington Capitals' Jason Doig, but he's also taunting Doig's teammates. Barnaby has one of the most animated faces in NHL history. It is definitely in full effect here. Sometimes the relationship of a coach to a player is much more like a parent and a child. If that's the case, then Colorado Avalanche's star Nathan McKinnon is throwing a tantrum at his coach. Jared Bednar on the team's bench. Settle down, little boy. Looks like somebody needs a timeout. Next, former habitual childlike troublemaker Sean Avery is here with the Dallas Stars. He squirts water at the San Jose Sharks bench. Then you have the Golden Knights' Pierre Edward Belmar putting the bite on the Nashville Predators' PK Subban. Literally, Belmar bit Subban's finger during a pile up in front of the net. And, again, literally adds insult to injury. Vegas' tough guy, Ryan Reeves, then challenges Subban. Subban is like, he bit me, he bit me, I can't believe it, he freaking bit me. But that's nothing compared to the Carolina Hurricanes player minding his own business sitting on the boards, but having his stick swiped by the Anaheim Duck player who skates by. During this fight, the Pittsburgh Penguins' Craig Adams tries to get the upper hand of the Philadelphia Flyers' Scott Hartnell by pulling Hartnell's hair. That was a bit of a turnabout because it was usually Hartnell doing things that annoyed and getting under the skin of opponents. Now, this one is the definition of childish. As the period ends, Patrick Maroon of the Tampa Bay Lightning shoots the puck at the Dallas Stars bench, almost hitting Joel Curveranta in the face. Back to hair pulling as this time is the Minnesota Wilds' Matt Dumba grabbing onto the locks of Timo Mir during a scuffle. And then there's faking an injury. The Montreal Canadiens' Mike Ribeiro pulls a soccer move by laying on the ice and cartoonishly withering in mock pain. 
Is he trying to get a yellow card called on somebody or what? Of course! Afterwards, he just laughs about it towards the boss of Druid's bench, and understandably, Martin the Point is not happy. But then there's childish moments in the sim bin itself. The Montreal Canadiens' Andrew Shaw does not agree with the penalty being called against him. So, he decides to destroy his stick in the box with frustration. But wait, there's more. After Shaw is escorted off the ice with a game misconduct, he tops things off by knocking all of his team's sticks off the rack and onto the floor. What a bad teammate! Set him to bed without dinner! Now usually, scoring a goal is the ultimate win in any hockey beat. But, that's just not the case here. It's not like Brad May was ever considered a goal scorer. He was a left winger who played in the National Hockey League for 18 seasons and only scored 127 goals in over a thousand NHL games. He made his mark with fists as an enforcer for seven different teams, amassing over 2,200 career penalty minutes. So, you would think that May would have been thrilled whenever he put the puck in the net and absolutely over the moon when it happened twice in the game. Here, with the Vancouver Canucks, May scored. But, Instead of celebrating, for whatever reason, May gets in the face of the Colorado Avalanche goaltender, David Abisher, and then he scores again in that game. But May is still not finished with Abisher. Hell, you would figure that Abisher had made us suffer more than enough for whatever he did to May by giving up two goals at him. But no, May decided to do it once again right in the goalie's face. When you're involved in a play on the ice, you don't necessarily expect to get squirted by the water bottle from a player on the opposing bench. But that's what Boston Bruin Scott Thornton did to Sue Ben here with the Canadians. Thornton gets a good chuckle out of it. It seems that opponents love trying to piss off Sue Ben. And then we have Shaw again. This time with the Chicago Blackhawks, but he's once again protesting a penalty from the boss. Shaw then gives a double figure salute as he leaves the ice. Not cool, dude. Just not cool. It's not a double finger, just a single finger from Andrew Ferenc of the Boston Bruins. After scoring a goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs to end a personal goal drought, Ferenc gives a salute to the fans and as part of the celebration, he definitely does not take the high road. But neither is this as we return to the water field. The Vancouver Canucks' Derek Dorsett squirts the liquid at Maroon here with the Edmonton Oilers and immediately is hit with a 10-minute misconduct penalty. Next up, Corey Perry of the Anaheim Ducks demonstrates a sneakier use of the bottle as he squirts some water into the gloves of the LA Kings' Jeff Carter during a break with no one but the camera looking. Now this is an interesting face-off strategy demonstrated by Stephen Ott of the Buffalo Sabres who sticks his tongue out at the opposing center before dropping the puck. Joe Thornton will go down in NHL history as one of the greatest playmakers who has ever played the game. But here, he's simply being a putz. While he was discussing something with the referee, Thornton, the San Jose captain, keeps intentionally poking Vancouver Canucks captain Henrik Sedin in the face. The crap server gene must run in the family because Joe Thornton is the cousin of Scott Thornton who was earlier seen squirting water in the face of an opponent while play was going on. This exchange between the Colorado Avalanche and the Detroit Red Wings is a harbinger of things to come. Of course, the two teams had a rivalry that lasted from the mid-90s into the early 2000s. The rivalry officially started in Game 6 of the 1996 Western Conference Final when Colorado's Claude Lemieux hit Detroit's Chris Draper from behind and drove Draper's face right into the board, with Draper suffering extensive facial injuries. This incident was before that, and the main characters are the Avalanche's Mike Ritchie and the Red Wings Keith Primo. The issue here seems to be their sticks. Maybe like a childish game, punch up sticks, and after all, it ends in a water bottle being thrown. And of course, this instance was tame, especially when you consider the things that were to come in the rivalry. Things like bench clearing brawls, flying crossbody tackles, and goalies ducking it out on multiple occasions. But the above incident is still childish. And there you have it. The most childish moments in NHL history. Which one do you think was the most childish? And comment below on anything we missed. Click the video on the screen to watch when hockey players fight the referees. And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow. And 
See you next time.